Today, I'm determined to finish the install on my 911 suspension pan. Come on, let's do this. time welcome to garage time you know this channel and this community is all about sharing tips and tricks so you can build something cool in your garage come on let's do this okay last week's episode I got the new suspension pan roughly to fit in place and it's in its correct position so now I just need to do its final trim and uh, mark it very carefully get it in its in its position so I can weld it in place Okay, I'm getting ready to cut the suspension pan um, so it fits the gas tank support. And I just marked a couple lines here in addition to having it clamped. All right, guys, I've done enough measuring. Um, I think it's time to uh, get the first cut in. I'm going to be cutting right along here where the gas tank support is. So I'm going to use the air saw to just, uh, you know, get a conservative cut on that and see how it lines up. Okay, I've gone through a few cycles now of uh, trial fits and I have it trimmed and uh, looking good. It's, it's, um, it's in position, still using the jack to hold the diagonal, but I have a screw um, right there in the middle of the screen. And then over here, I have it trimmed on this side and it's, it's fitting really well against the flanges. Uh, let me show you from the bottom. Okay, I just have uh, a couple clamps holding it in place right here. Here you can see that screw is uh, the screw is sticking through, um, and then I have to push it up right here. But I just need another clamp; it'll it'll push up into there. Okay, this is the driver's side, and it has some good um, alignment too. It's just that the flanges are a little bit offset, so I'm going to have to devise a method to just pull this down. Um, when the pan is out, I can pull it down by hand, but I'm going to have to probably weld some tabs on here and be able to pull this down. But right now, um, I'm done trimming and cutting, so I'm going to go inside and uh, rebuild the flanges that I had to cut earlier. Let me show you. Let me show you what I'm going to do. I thought I would take a template of the original flange and then make the new flange really to fit the new pan. The driver's side needs that same flange. I'm going to put some relief cuts in here. Um, just because it's just going to go faster and I'll weld up the cuts in the, in the end. If this was an external part or something that was going to be seen, I would spend the time to form these around. Doesn't fit at all. Need to make a little um, moon shape around this, this bolt. I'm just getting ready to tack weld this in place. It's, uh, it's close enough. I completely messed up on this section right here. I, uh, I cut it the wrong angle. You can see it's like a, like a pizza. Um, I should have cut it the other way, just to cut it upside down and messed it up. So I'm gonna have to probably splice a little piece in there or just fill it up with plug weld, I'm not sure yet. So I'm gonna tack this in right now and uh, move to the other side. I know it's very uncharacteristic for me to use a MIG welder, but in this case, I'm, um, I'm just doing it for speed. Um, this does not require any planishing, any metal finishing. Um, this is purely done just to, uh, for speed. All right, I just wire brushed this weld just to kind of show off a little bit. Um, you can get good results with a MIG welder too.
Okay, I couldn't actually finish the welding on this side because that um, the bolt boss there is kind of in the way of the weld seam since this weld seems lower on this side. So I'm gonna remove the pan and finish up this, um, this weld now that I know that it fits. And also over here, there is a flange I need to fix. So you can see there's a hole right here. There you go, there, there's a hole right here. That was created um, when I was grinding the uh, old pan out. So I need to repair that flange too. I'm gonna do that right now. All right, I did get the, uh, the, the flanges are um, real nice and solid. There's uh, you know no pinholes underneath. You can look at the light below here. Um, I did have to touch it up with the TIG welder, but uh, this is definitely better than it was, nice and strong. Same is true for this side. It is um, you know, fully welded in, and once again, from the back side, there are um, no holes to be seen through, the, through there. I also fixed this uh, flange here in the corner. The flange here in the corner has, that hole is now removed. I just filled it up with weld. So I'm now ready to wire brush, clean this metal really well, and start to uh, rust proof it so I can uh, get the whole thing welded back together. All right, I'm in the process of cleaning out the underside of this cavity right here. And what I'm, I'm finding is I'm finding a bunch of this um, cotton material. It's like, it's like a nest, probably a mouse nest. I don't think, I don't think the factory put this stuff in there. Um, so I'm just digging this out so I can clean this cavity and get it ready for uh, rust treatment. I hope I don't find a little critter inside. All right, it never ceases to amaze me what I, uh, what I find in this car. Um, in the rear shelf, I found a bird's nest. And now this is like a mouse nest here in the front. So, you know, this car has had an interesting life. It's been, you know, an animal sanctuary. It's been in a wreck. It's been who knows where when it was new. And now it's kind of getting a new life, um, kind of one step at a time. So this is just an interesting kind of part of the process. Just wanted to show you guys what I found. It's really important that I clean out these empty cavities when I have access to them so I can prevent rust uh, from getting in there in the future. And hopefully this car is driven enough now to where any critters are going to stay away. Okay, I'm here under the car. I've just cleaned out this section and I got all the original rust out of here. This is the factory paint uh, right here. This is, this is original. I'm going to scuff it up with some Scotch-Brite and add a little bit more, you know, Rust-Oleum kind of type paint. This is the cavity right inside here where I found all the, uh, the, mouse, the mouse nest. And then on these seams right here, where it's gonna get spot welded, I'm gonna coat this with weld, weld through primer. On any spots that gets welded is gonna have weld through primer. Okay, while I'm waiting for the paint to dry, I'm working on this gas tank bolt. The threads on this bolt are okay, but it's coming unattached from the surrounding metal. Um, this was bulged out like a volcano and I've, I've kind of hammered it flat just a little bit but I need to go through and, and kind of re-weld the nut to the, to the surface of the, the plate so it doesn't come loose in the future. Okay, I welded around the hole, um, most of it anyways, so it's gonna hold the nut in place, but now I need to uh, tap out the hole so the bolt will still work. Okay, I got all those flanges with the, uh, another coat of paint on them. I got the uh, weld through primer on them. And I'm ready to weld uh, the pan in, but um, I got an air on my welding helmet, so the batteries are low when I was fixing that, uh, that little bolt area for the gas tank filler. So I had to take a break and go to the store and grab those batteries. So, got to do what you got to do. Okay, the low battery indicator says I'm good to go. Okay, before I weld this in, I... Um... I'm probably gonna overkill this. It's probably not required, but what I'm, what I'm seeing is this is where the bulk of the suspension loads are. And I got one, two, three, four spot welds um, and maybe a, you know, about the same on this side. So 
I'm gonna edge weld this here only because I'm, you know, kind of paranoid and, and uh, I just wanna make it a little stronger. The worst thing that could ever happen is that this becomes detached from the pan, you know, while you're driving. And uh, I'm not blaming the quality of this at all. I'm just going the extra mile. Uh, now I feel better. Porsche did this to some of their race cars. I think they called it uh, seam welding. Um, not particularly in this area, I don't know, but um, along gas tank supports and all the uh, spot welded structures, all the pinch welds, all those can get um, seam welded like this or lap welded. And that, that increases the strength of the uh, structure, believe it or not. Okay, earlier I mentioned I wanted to keep the front end um, relaxed without having this jack in place. But what I found out is that the front section of this, this car is super weak when it doesn't have the, uh, the pan installed. It's basically just a hollow, it's just like a hollow square. Um, and there's nothing to keep it in position. So what happens is I, I'll overstretch it and it'll move like an inch or more, two inches. And then it just kind of springs back. So um, without any strength given by the pan, it's just not able to hold its position. So what I'm gonna have to do is realign the pan. It's in now for its final time. I'm gonna check all the suspension points for like the third time. And I'm gonna have to overshoot a little bit on the diagonal and then do some welding and then let it relax back into position. Um, so I'm just gonna have to keep monitoring it and, and strategically weld it in the corners so that it holds its uh, position. All right, I have a little bit of good news. The uh, diagonal jack is gone, and I've just been able to get a few tack welds in. Um, there's one right there, a couple right here. There's some here in the corner, um, and I've done some on the outside as well. Moving over here, a couple tack welds here, um, here in the front. I'm trying to hold this uh, diagonal position. There's a few tack welds down underneath here as well just holding things in place. So I've been using this uh, tram gauge over and over again to make sure that the position of these suspension points are um, the correct distance from front to rear. Uh, they're also the correct distance um, from diagonal. And um, so the position of these are correct, you know, this direction and this direction. And now I'm trying to determine if they're in the right place in terms of height. So I'm gonna get the spirit level back out like I did before and just measure the height relative to the rear torsion bar. If you remember a few episodes back, I leveled the entire car based on the rear torsion bar using a, uh, a custom C channel, kind of a spirit level technique. And uh, so I'm confident the car is sitting horizontal or flat. And I just wanna make sure that the uh, suspension points in the front are also uh, flat with respect to the torsion bar in the back. So that means there's no, there's no tweak in the chassis and uh, I'm not gonna use the garage floor, I'm going to use the water level to know that it is definitely flat. Okay, so I'm down here with this, uh, this height gauge and this channel full of liquid has been completely leveled. It's actually level with the floor, no shims are required. So I'm trying to fit this underneath here. Okay, that's touching on the uh, driver's side. So the height here is, is fixed by this rod. So I check the other side and it is, it's, it's off. This side is off by about, let me try to get an idea. Okay, the distance between the bar and the channel here is about um, three or four millimeters. So there's a, there's a twist going like this in the pan that I need to take care of. So I think what I'll do is I'll support the car by this front side, and then I'll just hammer this side down, try to level it out before it's all the way welded in. A Little bit of bad news. A little bit of brute force. Let's see if it's closer. 
Okay, just so you know, the car is supported by a, uh, a jack stand in the center of the car, right where the uh, tunnel meets the front bulkhead, so it's a strong enough area to support the weight of the car. And I have the tires on either side, just in case it does fall off the jack stand or whatever. But um, So there's no uh, weight of the car adjusting the heights of this thing. Everything is um, supported in the center, so it's free to twist without the weight of the car, which I think is the most accurate way to do it. So this side is what it was before. This side. is still too loose. Okay, now it is within two millimeters. So I guess we went from four to about two, um, or three to about two. So believe it or not, that only moved it like a millimeter and a half, which uh, is kind of surprising how strong this gets with only a few tack welds in place. So I gotta do it again. Let me show you guys what I'm hitting against inside here. So this is a, just a, a solid round bar. And then I'm aiming here in the corner. And uh, this is a just a big half inch piece of, of steel to spread the load. So I'm, I'm lining this up in the corner to kind of give it some support. And then I'm coming straight down and pushing on this area right here. I've also moved it kind of over into this area a little bit too, just pushing down on the pan. And you can see it's, it's changing the gap a little bit. So I will, I will have to come back and hammer these flanges flat as it, as it goes down, it's, it's starting to uh, you know, distort as it should. All right, now it's moment of truth, take two. Okay, I got contact on the right side. And contact on the left side. So I think it's I think it's right, but I'm gonna get the square and square up this height gauge to the floor or to the channel just to make sure I'm not measuring in a wonky way. But I think the hardest part might be done. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, um, but I was able to confirm that the, the channel is located um, you know, directly below the pickup points and that it's square from front to rear and square from left to right. So uh, this is uh, no longer tweaked. It looks great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna double check a couple of these other measurement points just to make sure I didn't, for some reason, only affect the front. So everything is, is planar. Um, with respect to the rear of the car. Um, so one other thing I'm going to show you inside. I'm just going to use the old straight edge method right there at the gas tank and make sure that things are looking flat there too. Okay, if I hold the straight edge across the, uh, the gas tank floor, it's, uh, it's nice and flat. So if I get into an area where there's no weld, yeah, right here, this is looking really good. The, uh, the driver's side is the same situation. Um, no daylight underneath here. So I have a feeling the, the pan is in its final position and uh, you know, the, the intimidating part is over. So now it's just a matter of uh, finishing a ton of plug welds and really locking this thing into position. Um, the heat shouldn't distort this too much. I am gonna double check as I go, just to make sure that things aren't getting really out of hand, but I really don't see anything moving at this point, considering how hard I had to hit it just to move three millimeters. Okay, here's a cool little uh, little trick for you guys. So I'm having I'm having trouble with this flange being offset. So I need to pull this this part of the car. I need to pull it down. So I've welded on this uh, little little eye bolt. You see there, it's a, just an eye bolt, and it's welded onto the outside of that flange. And then I put this S hook through there, and then I put a bar. Okay, there's a bar through there like that. And now I can, you can see I could pull this flange down to where I want it. Once it's where I want it, I can C clamp it and then finish welding this. This is the passenger side gas tank support, and it's about, I'd say, 80% full.
finished are, are welded in. See all the plug welds there? There's the weld um, there in the corner, um, continually going up to the front bulkhead. Here's the driver's side plug welds. Still a few more to do in this corner, and also um, there's a, a, a butt weld there to finish and a big hole to fill. Okay, this is the driver's side lower area, and I was able to get that seam to uh, meet with the other seam. There's still some to be trimmed. Um, a little trimming needs to be done right here. This, this flange on the new pan is just a little too long, but I did bring this down like I showed you on the other side with that special uh, eye hook technique. And these, these are just raw welds, not ground down, not finished. I'm gonna be doing a lot more work on this to kind of make it look prettier. But uh, the, the good news is, is it's in place and it's not moving. Okay, here's the passenger side. Um, again, these are just raw welds, plug welds, not looking uh, very pretty at the moment, but definitely secure. You can see that eye hook there. Um, that's definitely gonna be cut off. I still need to pull down a little bit more to get these, these flanges here to line up a little bit better. All right, so that was a struggle. You know, I'm not gonna lie. Plan A didn't work out as like I wanted it to. You know, I had to use the uh, diagonal jack longer than I wanted, um, but I didn't just slap it in there and I didn't rush to get the job finished. Um, I took a lot of time measuring. Um, that's why the video is probably a little longer this week. Um, I tried to explain all the steps, even though some of them were off camera in terms of lining up and relining up, measuring, measuring, measuring. So thanks for sticking with me to the end. Next time, I'm going to install that cover that goes over the top of the uh, uh, suspension pan, tidying up the welds and uh, treating them a little bit more with rust. I like to use a 3M uh, cavity wax on all the internal cavities that have already been welded, just in case some of that, um, some of that paint that was put on there and the weld through primer you know, a lot of that gets burnt when you do welding, especially as hot as I did the plug welds. So I want to use the next best thing, which is either um, epoxy primer or uh, cavity wax in those in those cavities. But I will also let you know that I'm going to go to Rensport next week. Uh, it's a four day event, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I will be there all four days. For those of you that don't know, Rensport Reunion is held in Monterey, Laguna Seca. It's a famous track. They're going to be reuniting you know, old race cars with old race car drivers, modern Porsches on the track, car show, car corral. It's going to be a big event, Porsche's 70th anniversary. I'm going to be there all four days. If you happen to be going, please let me know. I will leave my email in the about section on YouTube, or you can find me on Instagram and Facebook under Ah Garage Time. I'd love to meet up with you and uh, share some stories. So thanks again. See you soon.